to Minding Your Business, the show for really different, interesting, talented, and fascinating entrepreneurs. I'm your host, June Middleton. We're doing something a little different uh, this evening on uh, this show. We talk to entrepreneurs all the time, but one of the things that I wanted to talk to you, our viewers, about is actually being an entrepreneur and some of the things that you might want to consider before starting up your own business or in some instances helping your business maybe to work a little bit better or for you to take a better look at what it is that you're doing in your business. We have as a very special guest this evening and I'm just so happy that she was willing and able to do this, Maria Giorgio who is an entrepreneur and certainly someone who has great talent. She's a wonderful singer. She's been on the show several times and in many instances has also performed for us. So what I thought it would be nice to do is since she is an entrepreneur and has been through some of these experiences that we would talk together and she would ask me questions about some of the processes or the considerations that one would go through in being an entrepreneur and running a business. So, Maria, welcome back. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, June, You're thank terrific. you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be oh, on yeah, the show. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun having you here, so we just have to... Tr Try and contain <laughs> ourselves. Yes, <I> know. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, welcome back. Now, we've got some um, interesting PowerPoint presentations up here mm -hmm. that are going to address... Uh, running a business okay. and being in business. So anytime that something comes up that you have a question about or that you want me to explain better, uh, just jump right in and I'll try to answer your question, hopefully. Sounds whatever good. question you have. So in starting a business, you want to think about is it a hobby or is it a business? And what is the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. In a lot of instances, in, you'll see with the first um, presentation we have that talks about it being a hobby, you have to think in terms of what the, the wonderful little product that you used to make and have and that your family loved and right. they said, oh, make me one and <laughs> mm -hmm. you say, gee, I'm doing a lot of these things for family and friends and so maybe I should start a business. And then you have to think, well, wait a second. Um, what's going to be involved if I exactly. turn this into a business and do I let go of the safety rope of the work that I have now, mm -hmm. that job where I get a steady paycheck, to think in terms of trying to start my own thing. And so you have to be considerate of whether or not turning a hobby into a business is really going to work for you. Exactly. Now, I believe you had an instance where you did this at one time. I you? did, yes, with my skin care. Uh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And, um, I, you know, I have a great passion for it. I'm a retired makeup artist. And skin was always my, my thing. Mm -hmm. So I picked up a, an herbal book one day and I said, oh, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. And I'm sure you had friends and family <laughs> yes, and other uh, acquaintances who just loved your product. Mm -hmm. And then where did they go? Um, well, you know, <laughs> they purchased some mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then that was it because they wanted me to do their facials for them. Mm -hmm. like, there was a story about a, a, uh -huh. a young man who in, um, he started a motorcycle business. He uh, he was in school, mm -hmm. and he and a couple of friends decided to go to uh, I think it was China or Japan, and they bought six or eight motorcycles. They got a company in Los Angeles to import them because people loved them. They thought they were great. They thought they were wonderful. They borrowed I think ten or twenty thousand dollars to get it all going, and he um, started riding the motorcycle to a deli. Um, at lunchtime or something like that oh, no. and to make a long story short he ended up selling one and now he's got a garage of several motorcycles exactly and so he said well I guess maybe I should go to something else because motorcycle riding actually was a hobby for him mm-hmm mm -hmm. and this is what happens that people realize that starting doing something because it's a hobby and a love is not going to always translate no, into a it business. Isn't. It isn't. And this is what has to be very uh, carefully considered because, I mean, it does happen. Some people are able to take uh, a hobby and 
turn and it, it into... takes off. Mm -hmm. I know a, mm -hmm. a gal mm -hmm. who makes soap, and now she has this great business. They're in Bendels, and and it started as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And I believe the uh, the Louder family actually started that way as well. S.J. started in her dad's garage. Okay. One cream. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of not just having uh, the product, but the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that what's most important about any kind of business, you have to have somebody who's going to buy your product. That's right. Is there a need? If there's not a need, how do you create one? That's Can you create That's an excellent point because yes. that's really what it's all about, mm -hmm. the marketing aspect. Exactly. And so, um, and also, too, people don't realize what's involved in having their own business. Uh, I mean, do you really want to go through all the pains and the worries and the uh, sleepless nights and mm -hmm. the expense? Well, the expense is, of starting, right. is something else. And if you mm -hmm. have, if you're doing it and you have a job mm -hmm. and you have the time to, you know, proceed step by step, well, that's okay because you still have your job. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. support it and yourself. And you that's the thing it. that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. When they have a steady job and they get a paycheck, they don't have to be concerned about taxes, about right. uh, exactly. employee problems, about marketing, about getting the product out. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is just sit, do what they're supposed to do, yes. and collect their check. Yes. And that's where the issues uh, come up. And also, too, it, one of the things that is important is, are you a salesperson? Are you a rainmaker? Can you actually bring in the business? And I think we have um, a, a slide that talks about that being a rainmaker. Ah, there we and are. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people are not self-starters. No. I mean, you know, do you need an alarm clock and four people to get you up in the morning? Hello. <laughs> Some people do. Bucket of yeah. water, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. They do. And this is another issue. Mm -hmm. And if you get into, um, if you're working at home and you have a separate room or a desk or you go to the kitchen table, uh, how long do you sit there mulling over a cup of coffee before you decide, what should I do now? Exactly. You know, does the phone start ringing? You hope. You hope. Uh, and what else do you have to do to get you the day to started? You get out there and canvas and, mm -hmm. and introduce yourself to people and know how to approach them. Mm -hmm. You can't, mm -hmm. if you have a product and you want it in a boutique, mm -hmm. you can't walk in a store and say, hi, I have a jar of this. Would you like to sell it for me? You have to walk in and say, hi, I have a fabulous product for you, and I can guarantee you your clients are going to love it. Look at my skin. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm using, and I am of such and such an age, which I can say now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the result. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and, you know, such and such and such. And, and give them a sample. Let them try it. But how long will it take before they fall mm -hmm. in love with it and they'll start ordering it by the case. Exactly. It depends and, on how long it's on the shelf. Yeah, and how long do you have to wait before you get enough business in and enough clients yes. to start paying your expenses? Exactly. That could take quite a while. It could mm -hmm. take a few years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things that people don't realize, they see somebody who's already set up and established, sitting in their office, phone ringing, um, assistant outside, and they think, oh, gee, I want to do that. Okay. I want to be that, not realizing that there was a lot that went before that, you before bet. they got to that point. I remember uh, at one time I was a stockbroker, and I remember having brokers come in that were hired by a very uh, large investment firm, and one came in with a PhD, and he was smarter than anybody in the whole world. And he felt, because he was so smart, that business was just going to fall into his lap. He was had a PhD in finance. Mm -hmm. Well, he came in, he had his books and his files and everything else, and he sat and read them all day. Phone never rang. <laughs> he spent all his time learning the stuff and forgot to socialize to, and build to relationships. Do, to do, that's, that's the key, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, find, finding the niche first, and then where do you market it? How do you market it? Are there organizations uh, where you can go? Mm -hmm and um, network that's the key mm -hmm. network mm -hmm. do you have like with me as people have said have at home parties i live in new york city nobody i don't have a, a station wagon no it doesn't work like that <laughs> but remember the tupperware parties oh jeez, i still love tupperware parties. <laughs> uh, 
you know, you want to, if you're a city person, be it New York, uh, Chicago, Los Angeles, you're looking mm -hmm. at bigger department mm -hmm. stores. You really want to mm -hmm. want to get in there with something innovative, no matter what And that's what, it what is. a lot of people don't realize, that uh, to be a rainmaker, you have to have the contacts to bring in yes. your clients. Yes. You have to know people. You have to build relationships. Just being skilled at is what you enough. do or having a neat product is not going no. to cut it because you can be a mediocre person with your skills mm -hmm. and have a so-so product, have it reasonably priced, but nobody's going to buy it if they don't like you. No. And Not I think that's a, a, something too that a lot of people um, gloss over. They don't realize Their own that you are a part, you are the business. You are the brand, so to speak. I mean, you hear a lot these days. Everybody wants Branding. a brand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and they don't understand what a brand really is. H how reliable are you? Who, how do people identify you or with you if you're recommended or referred exactly. to someone? Yes. Do they come up with, oh, that person's reliable. Oh, that person's uh, very efficient. Oh, that person's going to call me in the morning. And, I mean, for lawyers, one of the things that they get complaints about most mm -hmm. is that they don't call their clients. And this is the issue that often gets them brought up before the bar. Sure. I mean, yes, attorneys are very busy. Mm -hmm. But... We hope. We hope. <laughs> but if it's not you, have your assistant call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. want to know what's going on. Where mm -hmm. are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, is that being an entrepreneur as you know, is about having clients, mm -hmm. top of the screen. Top of the screen. Having clients. Certainly being willing to put in the time to understand that you cannot do just what you enjoy doing and run a business. Mm -hmm. There is more to it than that. And you have to be willing to assume that the financial as well as the management and the rainmaking yes. Um, yes. components of running that business. And I mean, certainly, if you could do all four. That's great. You're blessed. Yes. <laughs> but You're at the same the time, and uh, uh, people think, well, I can get a partner. And that can be either a blessing or a absolute nightmare. pure hell. Yes. Because a lot of people don't understand as well that having a partner can be as bad as being in a marriage. It starts out wonderful, lovey-dovey, and oh, this is the greatest person since apple pie and mm -hmm. mom and everything else, and then the problems start. Well, remember when I was starting my skincare line and there was a gentleman from uh, Italy yes, yes, and he was yes. very interested in my products? Yeah, 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 I remember. And you, I don't remember what it is you told me to ask him, but then you told me, watch his face. Mm, mm -hmm. And I remember he said, uh, my products were going to be um, uh, made in Italy. In Italy? Mm -hmm. I live here. Mm -hmm. No, you're not taking my formulas. Then I asked him the question, and it's like his whole face dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, bye-bye. I don't care how much money you mm -hmm. have. This is mm -hmm. my baby. Right. And this is one of the problems, too, that exists, is mm -hmm. that people start, I mean, I, my, my <coughs> practice in a lot of instances deals with helping people to get out of bad relationships, I'll mm -hmm. call it, mm -hmm. because they're anxious to start the business. Right. They said, oh, this partner, he's, got, he's coming with money or she's coming with contacts or whatever else, expertise, and then they forget to sit down and write down an agreement. Oh, yeah, and then they realize, oh, I've relinquished control. Right, yeah. Yeah, I had uh, clients at one time when people actually used to write checks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now they take pictures of it. <laughs> right, 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 right. The magic cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, that there were two partners, and one was the mo was the main one in the office. He mm -hmm. was the administrator, so and he would take the orders and so on. And the other one was the outside guy, and he was always going to lunches and dinners and traveling and so forth. And I'm sitting in the office one day, uh, writing up, uh, looking at a, over a contract for them, and I see one partner come in and take two checks out of the back of the book. There you go. 
Now, they had no agreement in place that says, mm -hmm. do not take checks out of the back of the book. I mean, it's a very basic thing. You don't think you have to put it in writing? You do. You have to put everything in writing. That's it, exactly. Because That's there exactly. are people who will just cross the line and don't mm -hmm. understand any type of uh, professional or personal courtesy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is the, the issue and the problem with having a partner. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, whether it's a partnership or a limited liability company or right. a corporation, there has to be an agreement in place yes. saying, you can do this, I can do that. Uh, we can do this together, you can spend X number of dollars without my permission, or if it's over that amount, you must, we must agree on it. Right. And because they don't, they're so anxious to get started with the business, oh, yeah. they don't want to take the time to sit down and bang out. An agreement. Correct. And there's, that's where the, the problem And that's start. where the trouble starts, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. So, and I mean, it's not like kissing and making up. Or <laughs> no, because now there's money involved. That's, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that'll tear apart anything. Any, anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, the the primary thing is if the person is not comfortable working alone, then certainly what they should do is get a partner, mm -hmm. but make sure they have a partnership agreement. Agreement. Have Have you actually worked with a partner as Absolutely such after not. Italy? No, no. <laughs> absolutely not. I'm, I'm an alpha wolf. You know, I like everything done a certain way. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my thing is if I needed help, hire a freelancer, hire mm -hmm. an intern. Um, you know, they're fresh, they're new. They teach me, I teach them. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Now, if we could just go, to, I think we have something here for clients. And um, we talked about the Rainmaker, mm -hmm. whether or not you're outgoing and sales oriented. Mm -hmm. And uh, for if we can just go to the next one, which I think um, talks about being having the partner. And then um, Decision Maker, that's a biggie. There are a it lot is. of people who want to have a business, but they really don't want the responsibility of having to make that decision yes. to say, yes, let's do it, or no, let's not do it. They need somebody else to say, eh, it's okay. No, you, 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 you know, if you can't make a decision either with someone or on your own, you have no business, mm -hmm. being in business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think a lot of people who are in business seem to mistake that having a partner really is sort of like having that boss. Yes, that they no longer yes. Have. Without a doubt, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it's a, especially if it's a 50-50. Um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, then to getting back to who's bringing in the clients and are they really still going out getting clients or are they just hanging out having lunch mm -hmm. and dinner and running up a huge expense account? Exactly. Which happens also. With oh, people. yes. I oh, see yes. that a lot in people that I deal with. And the, probably the last thing that I'd like to, uh, for us to t take a, a look at and talk about a bit is having a business plan. Did you, I know that at one point we had talked about a business plan. Did you? Yes, you gave me one, I believe. Mm -hmm. I still have it. <laughs> I'm not dead yet, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it comes in handy with my music mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it gives me ideas on how to, you know, how to do things. Right. And I think we have also a, um, a slide where we talk about um, having a business plan. It's probably the next one after this one. And uh, after this one. <laughs> I think I lost my place. This Sorry. Is a slight okay. <laughs> so, do, do you need, need a business, business plan? plan? I mean, the business plan tells you uh, really what it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. how you want to do it, how long do you think it's going to take you to accomplish it, how much money do you need? Because there's, well, if it was, we're talking about a romance, it's, there's no romance without finance, but there's right. no business without finance as well. And in a lot of instances, I've had entrepreneurs on the show who said they have borrowed from family and relatives. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, did you make um, a loan agreement with them? And they said, no, then mm -hmm. maybe you should do that. Oh, yeah, because there goes the family down the tubes. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right. And as you mentioned, money certainly can be a problem oh, yeah. with any anybody. So um, I think that um, the roadmap is the business plan. 
I think so. So, okay, and I think that's a good a note for us to, um, to end on at this point because I know that there were a couple of things that you said you wanted to ask me about. Well, I, I'm quite fascinated by you. Oh my gosh. You're very multifaceted, and oh I, I, I think you're one of the most amazing women I've ever met. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, the fact wow. that I just like you. Yeah. <laughs> I more, tell more, ladies and more, gentlemen, more, she's more. fabulous. <laughs> Um, okay, after that, you're going to have to ask one question. Oh, because I want to talk God. to you about what you're doing. Okay. All right. So now you graduated from Columbia University. I've had them on the show, people from oh, the school. Col I haven't been here. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm just, the I, next I one. want to throw this out to people. Okay. Um, you're, you're an attorney, a, you were a securities broker. You were the first, not just the first woman uh, to become a stockbroker in, in this country, but you were the first African-American woman. Does that make me old? No. <laughs> God, it makes you fabulous. <laughs> um, what was that like for you? Because you're a trailblazer for oh, so many Jews. It was, it was, um, it was an interesting nightmare. Uh -huh. it was I would imagine. Nightmare. I would and imagine. it's actually a topic that we could go into, and I'd like to do that when we do another show. Okay. To talk about what it's like for women who hit that glass ceiling. Ceiling, absolutely. And All right. cut their faces to shreds trying to get through it. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I had actually have it, had it said to me at one time, uh, why, why are you trying to do things like a man does it? So I said, oh, okay. Okay, I don't know what that means, but we'll move beyond it. Yeah. So, but at any rate, um, like I said, that's enough to cover another show. But at this point, what are you doing? And well, I'm singing. Ah. That's my first love. Oh, wonderful. And I made a conscious decision a few months ago because I was still, you know, kind of fooling around with the skincare a little bit and mm -hmm. thinking, well, let me give it another try. Um, but since I'm not in the industry any, any longer, mm -hmm. I don't have that bulk of finances. Uh, I did yeah, everything yeah, myself yeah. and, you know, as a makeup artist, you really make fabulous money. Oh, yeah. But before so, we run out of time, will yes. you sing for us tonight? I'm going to sing for you and um, should I tell the audience where I'm going to be singing in May? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, where am I looking? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, cameras. Um, I will be singing uh, in Little Italy at uh, Cafetal Social mm -hmm. uh, Social Club, 185 Mott Street. I don't exactly have the date yet. Okay, well, we can do it May. again after you sing to make sure we have time Absolutely. for that to happen. All right. So, uh, and what are you going to sing? I'm going to sing, Baby, I Love You. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it is my pleasure to present to you singing Baby I Love You, Maria Giorgio. Thank Take you. Take it away. I will. Thank you. If you want my love, if you.
to my fans and this is your album well yeah this is my cd i'm not selling it yet on um any website or what have you but when you come to my gigs especially at uh, capital social club 185 mott street in may please check their website um it will be there you can purchase it with a donation or actually just take one because Mm. i'm that generous and it's it's (laughs) a great one it's really terrific i'm so thrilled that you did the show and talked me about too. business and everything <laughs> else. And also, I'd like to say thank you to our crew and to Ed Middleton, our director, and also who's my son, as <laughs> well as Jose Guevara, who helped us out. And of course, a very, very special thanks to Rich here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network for making this show possible. You have been watching Minding Your Business, the show for really talented, wonderful entrepreneurs. See yourself. Where you want to be. <laughs> and please join us again next time, and we'll have another interesting show for you. So, Maria, terrific. June, thank you. You too. <laughs> You're more than welcome. She's the best. She's the best. She really is. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back again. You know mm-hmm. that very soon. Very soon. So, just, um, and the club? Capital Social Club, 185 Mott Street. Okay. In May. Check the website for uh, my appearance dates. Thank you very much. Go there and eat. It's a lovely little place. Good food, too. (laughs) You, delicious. Mm. Nothing is microwaved. All Uh, homemade. All home cooked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Are we clear or should we do some more? I mean, I could dance to that. I can. Uh, (laughs) 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 So, we'll just again. Picture, you get a picture of your TV, and they're going to finally tell us, stop talking, we're done, you're through.